In a previous video, we discussed the transfer of energy between a system and its surroundings. When a chemical reaction takes place, it either needs to be provided with energy from the surroundings to fuel the reaction, an endothermic reaction, or it gives off energy to the surroundings, an exothermic reaction. There are two ways in which energy can be transferred between the system and surroundings, heat and work. We'll focus on heat in this video. We denote the amount of energy transferred as heat by Q. When a system gains energy as heat, the value of Q of the system is positive. What then is true about the value of Q of the surroundings? When a system needs energy for the reaction to proceed, the energy is taken from the surroundings as heat. This means that the surroundings will lose energy as heat, and so the value of Q of the surroundings will be negative. This is true for an endothermic reaction. For an exothermic reaction, the system gives off energy as heat, and so Q of the system is negative. This energy is released into the surroundings, and so Q of the surroundings is positive. We can actually calculate exactly how much energy as heat is lost or gained by the surroundings by using this equation. M of the surroundings is the mass of the substance or surroundings in grams. CSP is the specific heat capacity. Heat capacity is the amount of energy as heat needed to raise the temperature of the substance by 1 Kelvin. Specific heat is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of 1 gram of a substance by 1 Kelvin. Finally, because temperature is a measure of heat energy, we must take this into account when determining the amount of heat energy gained or lost during a reaction. We always measure this amount in terms of the surroundings because the energy is either gained or lost by the system when bonds break or are made. In either case, we can't measure the temperature of the bonds, so we must look at the surroundings to determine the amount of energy transferred as heat. Let's calculate the amount of energy as heat we would need to raise the temperature of 2.50 moles of water by 30.0 Kelvin. The heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram Kelvin. First things first. What do you expect to be true of the transfer of energy in this reaction if the temperature of the surroundings increases? If the temperature of the surroundings is being raised, that means that the system is releasing energy as heat into the surroundings. So the system is losing energy, and so Q of the system is negative, and the surroundings are gaining this energy as heat, and so Q of the surroundings is positive. Now let's calculate the amount of energy we would need as heat. How much energy do we need? We are given the amount of water in moles, so we must convert it to grams first by using the molar mass. 2.50 moles of water is 45.04 grams of water. When we multiply this value by the given specific heat capacity and the given change in temperature change, we get that the amount of energy as heat needed for this process to occur is 5,650 joules. Notice that the value of Q of the surroundings is positive, we expected this because the surroundings are gaining energy.